Welcome to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. I'm super excited about this episode for personal reasons. We'll get into that later, but what an amazing episode we have lined up for you. Now, before we get into it, Harmonious, what's a Harmonious? It sounds good, right? Well, Harmonious is the disruptive way to look at your business. It's the context to filter all the useless content out there in the world and figure out what applies to you, how can you scale your business, and how can you throw out everything you don't need. It is the fundamental business architecture that will help you run your business. On this show, we talk about that, but we talk about the three-legged stool of business. Business is one, mind and body. Today, I think we're going to talk a lot about business, but we're definitely going to talk about your sanity, which is your mindset at some point, I'm sure. So before we get too far, let's bring on my guest, Tam. I'm excited to meet you. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Brandon. I'm excited as well. Harmonious. I love that title. I love the name. I love the uh, what it stands for. It's amazing. I don't even know how you thought of that, but I love it. And thank you for having me here. I'm grateful. Awesome. I'm so excited to have you and get to dive in here. So I, I want to talk about what you're doing now for sure, but you have an interesting backstory that I want to highlight too. You're, you're a serial entrepreneur. You're a veteran. You're a mom. You're also, as I just found out, you're a child care expert. You have so much experience with little kids, but tell me, how did you become a, a serial entrepreneur? Okay. So um, I knew that I didn't want to work for someone forever. So part of the discipline of the military is you follow instructions from someone else. Me becoming an entrepreneur was me like freeing my mind from this Greek regiment um, and following someone else's direction. As an entrepreneur, you know, you can do your creative arts. You can spend as much time away or for your own personal business. Um, it's just, it was my way of expressing myself outside of um, what I did in the military. And like you said, I have so much experience with that. Um, I worked labor and delivery. I did childcare. I worked NICU, which is neonatal ICU. So that's very strict and regimented. But as far as what I wanted to do as a person, um, is why I became an entrepreneur because it was my own thing that I could do outside of the military. Yeah, I, I love that journey. And I think once you identify at a very young age, it happened to me too, that you can't take directions very well from other people. You should probably look at entrepreneurship and that's a good well, career path. I can do both. I actually am really good at taking direction. It just wasn't something that I saw myself doing a long time. Mm -hmm. And again, an employee mindset in the military mindset is really different. Yeah. Um, you can clock out as an employee. You're 24 seven when you're in the military, they can call you anytime. So I just kind of felt like I needed something that was for me outside of that. So that's why I started at 19 years old being an entrepreneur. That's amazing. What, what a journey. Now we are, we're going to dive into one particular company, but can you give us an idea of the, the scope of companies that you run as of right yeah, now? So I started out selling insurance. That was the first thing I did. I would go out and, um, I, it was multi-level marketing, which I, again, I would never support. But at that time, being young and being very popular, well-spoken, um, I was recruited into that. And I went from home to home selling insurance. That was my first thing I did. Um, and then I got into some other ventures. So some of what I've done on my own, as far as entrepreneurship, I, I ran a daycare, licensed daycare for four years. Um, it was a home-based uh, licensed daycare. I also... Um, am a general contractor. Less than 9% of ladies are general contractors in South Carolina, and I'm one of the 9%. So those are two licensed businesses that I have through the state. Now, as far as personal or professional, I should say, but not licensed, I'm a notary. I go around to veterans' homes who are unable to leave their home and get documents notarized. I'll go to their home and I'll notarize them for them. Some of them are... Um, not they're, they're homebound, I'll say it that way, without going too deep into it. Um, so they're not able to actually leave their home. So that is another form of a professional thing that I do, but it's not um, as structured or licensed as my other businesses were. Because of course, you know, you get audited, it's through the license and review board, things like that. So it's a little scripter. Yeah, that's that's amazing. Now, what, what I'm excited to dive into and what we're here to talk about today is uh, you see the website on the screen. I'll put a banner up to lionclient.com. So when Tam was sharing with me backstage what this website was all about, I was freaking out. I was like, this is so cool. As a matter of fact, I had the idea to do this a number of years ago because the pain is just so there as a business owner. So can you can you give us the overview of what Lion Client is? Yes. And I, I am glad that you understood it from the first time. So my son said to me the other day, 
He said, Mom, the concept is there. If people took two seconds to understand it, they would love it. He said, the thing is, it's foreign and new and unique. And so that's why oftentimes you have to keep kind of explaining the concept to people. But for you, you got it instantaneously. Like your eyes like lit up, your your whole demeanor changed. So I know you instantly got it. But um, so lying client, just in, I would say it is a labor of love because you say the word pain. And it's just like, you know, being pregnant, you, you're, you're, you're wanting the baby, but then the concept and the thoughts behind it. So it was formed from disappointment, but now I am excited about what it does. And so Lion Client is a web-based directory that houses employee and client experiences for employers or anyone that works in the professional or entrepreneurial mindset. So if you are a professional, meaning like a notary or a travel nurse, you may not own your own business, so to speak, but you're still public service in the public. Um, you're forewarned through the client and employee experience of what this particular client or employee can do. Because we as general contractors have hired employees and we've trained them on say how to do a roof. And then they go out and they start doing roofs on their own. Um, and then we've had employees who we have tools laying around. And so we go to collect that in a day and some of our, our more expensive tools aren't there. Um, so again, you just learn through life good and bad employees. But if you were forewarned that an employee um, was a certain way or a client was a certain way through this directory, how much time and money would you save? Another thing that I really like about um, the website is the premium member club. So if you were to think of accreditation through the BBB um, or someone who houses a uh, advertising for a, a business owner. So some businesses don't think that the client or employee experience is for them. But they definitely are excited about being able to link their website to a major website and advertise for only $30 a year. And that price is limited right now um, to the end of the year. But just imagine advertising on the premium member club. We also have uh, real-time scam alerts, which um, is uh, scams that are posted all through the United States. So all through our country. Um, and it's any, any scams that happens at real time. So if you check at eight o'clock in the morning, it's going to be scams there. You come back on lunch break and you check and scams there. And we have all kinds of scams from employee to uh, romance scams where people are doing like um, dating things and they're pretending to be somebody else. We have uh, fraud alerts in our scams. Uh, so there, there are a multitude of different scams that's listed there. And then we have the legal aid page, which um, has uh, legal aid, which is basically talks about how you can become an LLC, a sole corporation, how you get an EIN number. A lot of people have a hobby that they do, but they don't know how to turn it into a business um, mm -hmm. or a profitable entity. They're still like doing their work and they're great at it and they have the passion for it. But how do you transition that to getting paid? So the legal aid page is there as well. Um, so I think it's, it's, it's a lot of things there, but I just want to highlight, I think, the, my favorite five, um, which are the things that I just named, the client employee experience, P, um, PMC, scam alert, and then the legal aid page. Yeah, I, I love the client and employee side of it too, because yeah, as a business owner, um, in, in my last business in particular, we dealt a lot with, it, was, it wasn't retail based, but it was borderline retail custom. So we dealt a lot with customers and we dealt a lot with employees too. And there was always that time where you got the bad Google review and you just sit there as the business owner, like, I want to review you as the client. Like you, <laughs> you're an idiot. We did everything we agreed on. You're the idiot. And uh, okay. So obviously I'm getting fired up. That's why I love and you this. Should. And that's why and you should. And this is the thing I have started doing a segment. And I love when you talk about mindset because I, wholly believe that your mind controls the rest of your body, not in a physical sense, but I mean in every level. So when you're doing the best you can for a customer, how disappointing it is it for them to write a bad review when you've done everything you can do? And oh, where's the level course. playing field? They have so many places, Consumer Alert, FTC, BBB, that they can report us. But where's our level playing field? Where can a where can a business owner who's doing everything in their power to accommodate the customers, where can they be heard? And so you should be upset. The thing is, people are so embarrassed about the bad customer. They're so embarrassed about a scam being ran on them. Scam artists are geniuses. They literally study to learn how to scam people. They, it's not like you're dealing with the average Joe, the average person. This person or these people literally take the time out to know how to scam you. 
it is a very profitable business. 33 million scam calls are made in, a, in the United States every single day. That wow. is up as of two years ago. So you know the numbers are insurmountable now. So just imagine you got scammed, but you're you're really intelligent. So in your mind, I'm not going to report the scam because I don't want people to, to look at me and you're embarrassed. But the thing about it, scam artists, con artists, fraudsters, they depend on you not reporting it to lionclient.com because how can they keep going if it's reported? If you come in at eight o'clock in the morning, you see a scam uh, for a while. They were doing this Fannie Mae scam where you thought you were going to be paying Fannie Mae for student loans and it was going to a, um, a private account holder. And so because people were embarrassed to report it, it went on for months. It's not online client. Imagine how many people would, they are not going to uh, sign up for this um, consolidated loan is what they call it, where they take your unsubsidized and your subsidized loans and they combine them to give you a cheaper finance rate. It, it's not happening. They're not doing it. But you think, oh, I'm saving money and I'm going to pay this loan off sooner. It, it doesn't happen. So again, that scam is there. But imagine if you were to report it, how many people would not do this and the scam artists, excuse me, they would go out of business, so to speak. So they would have to think of another scam, which they're going to because that's their bread and butter. That's how they earn their money. But just imagine. So it's not only um, you that would feel that way. It's tons of people that feel that way. And unfortunately, they count on that. So they're like, okay, maybe one or two people report a scam. But about ten to 15,000 will not report a scam. So then they continue Ooh. to do, yeah. The numbers, I am a numbers person. So um, when I have a conversation, okay, okay, so my master's is in HR. I forgot to share that with you. So one of the things that we do when we look at a, a resume is we look at how can you change the atmosphere or the client, the, uh, the what are you bringing? What is the value that you bring to your employer? So I'm a numbers person. If you said I increase sales by 25%, okay, I reduce hours, working hours by 30%. So because of those numbers, I always think in terms of the scams that happen uh, with how we report it versus how we don't report it. And so those numbers are staggering. If you take the time out to deep dive, you'll realize it, that is why scams happen the way they do, because it is people that just don't want to report it. So we report it. We go and we get them from all over uh, the United States and we house it <laughs> on headlineclient.com. Um, and again, we don't wait until it's 10 or 15,000 people affected. We do it immediately. As soon as we hear about any scam, we, we report it. Yeah, I mean, 10, 10 to 15,000 to one is astronomical. That's crazy. But I think the flip side of that too, because I've never thought about reporting it. I mean, I've not that I've been the victim of it, but every time you list something on Facebook marketplace, you are bombarded with people. And uh, that's probably one of the most common scams that we're all aware of, but I would never think to re like, where would I even report that? So that that's probably the other side. So how do you get people to go and, and take this first step and actually report the scam or report the client or report the employee? People like you allow me to come on your show. I tell them about it on my different social media platforms. I speak about it. I talk about the mental health behind um, being a business owner tonight and live. We have a TikTok live with a psychiatrist. Uh, she is a uh, employee. She's a serial employee. Mm. <laughs> you will never. <laughs> but 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 her her husband, her daughter, her family members, they all uh, work their own private practice. So she understands the dynamic behind owning your own practice. She just does not want to do it, and it's okay. Not everybody's not made to be a right. entrepreneur or a professional career person. Some people really want to work under someone else and take direction and everything is fine. But the mindset with what we were discussing as far as let me, let me get back to that and, and, and stay on that track for a second. So the, the thing about those numbers are because of the mindset of each individual, it is staggering that we have people that will report and people that don't. But again, my my goal right now that I have developed the website, um, I did a pilot program and I asked people just like you. I had people that were entrepreneurs. I had people that were employees. And I said, hey, go in and look at this and tell me if you think we should add something. Um, we we literally just revamped the sign up. The sign used to take 22 minutes. Oh, excuse me, two minutes. Now it takes 30 seconds. You literally can sign. So everything, we want to be user friendly. But to answer your question, it's, it's people like you who get the concept and bring me on board and all of your listeners are going to hear. And guess what's going to happen? Your listeners are going to tell other listeners. I can't reach. My reach is what so far. 
Um, one of my favorite sports is basketball. My sons all play basketball. We love basketball. Um, I was one of those moms that lost the voice in the stands because I was cheering. <laughs> and, and the thing that their coaches tell them is the reason why you have a team is because your arms can only reach so far. Lion client can only reach so far for me advertising me with my social media, me um, telling everyone, but I'm one person. Uh, um, you can tell everyone, you know, you're going to share this with everyone, you know, but the thing about it is for it to be a widespread phenomenon and for everyone to know that we're, this is our safe space is for people like you to share it. Um, and then we tell people and they know it's there. They're like, oh, I can go and look at scams anytime you want to literally log in from your phone. Look at the updated scans. We have a house by category. We have the house by zip code. We have the house by, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, the dollar amount laws. So it's just like, there's literally the date. So if you looked at it for the last a couple of weeks and then you're at this day's date, you just put in a date and it'll show it. So it's, it's literally no reason why scammers should be around. Um, again, we, we always, um, try to find a way to eliminate them. And I even have a, a cartoon skit, an animated skit that I have. And the last is a series of uh, an episode of uh, a series of 10 episodes. And the last one is him attached to a, a rocket and I'm shooting him out of the earth. And I was like, wouldn't that be the fantasy for all business owners or honest people that we could just get rid of all the scams? But we can't. <laughs> that's, that's like asking for world peace. That would never happen. As long as people have their own mindset and we're not, yeah. um, we're not basically like uh, automated and we're real people then there's no way that we will have world peace because your opinion is your opinion. My opinion is my opinion. So it's the same thing with scams. You're going to have honest people. You're going to have dishonest people, but let, let's set the boundaries. Let's look at the scale. They have many ways of reaching out to us. We have lying client to say, Hey, these are the scams that's happening right now, real time. We don't want this to happen to you. So. Yeah, this is, this is amazing. It's such a, important conversation first of all but let's let's tie to the harmonious architecture so i i came into this conversation thinking it would be housed mostly in risk and defense and it is i mean this is obviously a risk for yourself uh, as a human being uh, for your business but i also see this spilling over into home into humans optimized in a meaningful environment this is your team your employees this could be such a valuable resource and tam i'm sure you you advocate this to your your users but if I know as a business owner that I have my team has access to this, then I don't have to be involved when fishy things come through the door. If if someone emails or calls and it sounds weird, hey, go view our resource that's that's online client to see if this is a scam that's been reported. If not, maybe feel it out and then also take that first step and report it. So I, I like the overlap here, and that's kind of how you can view it as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, to keep yourself protected, your business protected. And also your employees, because that's going to affect their mindset too. If they fall victim to one of these scams through your business, I mean, that's very, very damaging for their mindset and showing up to work. They're going to be devastated in most cases. So that's that's a really cool resource to have. I want to say thank you for that. And um, two points I want to dive in a little bit deeper that you made. So I do agree with you. It is very um, disheartening when you do the best for a, a customer or you're a great employee. Um, because we were taught in the military that 10 attaboys, one, oh no, can kill oh. all that. So imagine having 10 great accolades and then you do one bad thing. So yeah. again, you're right. Um, um, that employee does not want to cause you to lose money or to cause you to do something that may, may sometimes these scams are so bad they shut down businesses. I'm just going to yeah. take the gloves off and be, I don't want to fear monger. That's not my goal. I don't want anyone to sign up for lying crime because they're afraid. I want the community aspect. I want you to take care of each other in a community. And that's what I've been at, uh, pushing towards the um, the last three months is the community of why you need to join lying client. And you're absolutely right. No one wants the mindset of knowing that they failed their employer. Um, everyone goes in. I believe the majority of people I'll say this go in at the minimum wanting to make their employer money, make the job easier, you know, scale things down. So that is what I believe for the majority of people. Um, you're, you're definitely right about that. As far as the, um, what you're saying is as far as the risk, there is a risk. Every time you open a business, most businesses, 80% of businesses shut down the first five years. So yeah, those are the numbers. Um, so if 80% of businesses are shutting down the first five years, how, how can we 
do something to cause it to be a 30 year successful business? What are the hiccups that you go through that can say, hey, I did go through this. And again, Lion Klein community, because we network and we talk about different things that happen to another business owner, um, it gives you that, that feeling of community. And if you think about the most productive countries outside of the United States of America, and I've been, I've been fortunate enough to travel, I think about 20 countries now since I've been in the world. Yeah, I got to look at my passport. But during my <laughs> military time and now my civilian time, I've been able to travel. And each country does things differently. But one thing I do realize in each country, in each culture, is the ones that are the best are the ones that have the village mentality or the community mentality. And that is what I want everyone that joins lionclient.com to have. And so that's why when you brought up that, I was like, oh, I don't want to interrupt him. But there was, were two points that I want to deep dive on that you spoke about, that mindset and then that um, the culture behind whatever it is that you do as an employer so that your employee will not feel disheartened when they are scammed or they go through something like this. But again, it is so many ways through the phone calls, through the uh, redirect on internet, like you could, they can literally say, oh, this is on sale. And they think that they're ordering from someplace that is wonderful. And they're redirected to a place that's taking all of your information. And then they're going to pretend that they're you and they're going to open different accounts. So again, I, I like convenience. I'm a convenience person. Lionclient.com is a web-based directory and it has all these things. So you don't have to keep searching different aspects and taking hours out your day. Everything is centrally located right there. So the convenience of it is, is, and I'm a bias, of course, because I created it. I thought of it, I created it, but it is unmatched. I've heard of other um, websites that do certain things, but none of them do exactly what we do. Yeah, this is amazing. I love that you brought up community. We are firm believers in that. That's why we started our, our business accelerator mastermind to bring a community of entrepreneurs who are looking to go to that next level together as a group. That's the whole point. And I love that you have that same mindset of, of helping people get to that next level together. So um, this has been an amazing conversation. I love the product. I love the website. I'm excited to go check it out. We're going to put it in the show notes. If you're listening, if you're watching, it's been on the screen the whole time. So please go check it out. Crazy pricing through the end of the year. Um, and if you're wondering if your risk and defense scores are maybe a little bit low, you don't have that area of your business fully backed up, well, go take the bad. It's our business architecture diagnostic. We'll give you a score in all 10 elements of the harmonious architecture. And we'll tell you, if, you're, if your RAD scores are a little low, we're going to send you to go see Tam. Sign up for lionclient.com and boost those scores a little bit. So Tam, thank you again for being here. Thank this you. has been a phenomenal episode. Thank you, Brandon. And I'm grateful. Thank you for having me on. And I look forward to coming back uh, and sharing some more things as we grow. Absolutely. Can't wait to have you back. Uh, thanks again. And for you listening, Thank you. Go take action. You know where this applies. You have the context. This applies to RAD, to home, a number of different areas in your business. If you need help, Tam will get you there. We'll get you there with the BAD. Go take action. We'll see you on the next episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Thanks for listening.